So the, the, the why of Neuralink, uh, just to, to go over it, is I think it's important for us to address brain-related diseases. Um, the, the, everyone, if, they, if you survive cancer and heart disease, the odds are that you will have uh, some brain-related disorder. So it'll be like Alzheimer's or, or dementia. And if you don't, uh, friends and family will for sure. Um, and it, I think unless we have some sort of brain-machine interface uh, that can solve uh, brain ailments of all kinds, whether it's an accident or uh, congenital or any kind of brain-related disorder, uh, in, in, or, or a spinal disorder, if you know somebody who's uh, broken their neck or broken their spine, uh, we can solve that with a chip. And, and this is something that I think most people don't uh, quite understand yet. And we're going to go over in detail how this is possible. Um, but I, th I think there's there's an incredible amount we can do to, to solve um, brain disorders, act, uh, damage, um, and, and all this will, will occur actually, I think, quite slowly. Um, so I do want to emphasize that it's not going to be like suddenly uh, Neuralink will have this incredible neural lace and start taking over people's brains. Okay. It, it will take a long time. And I, I've, I've said a lot about AI over the years, uh, but I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Um, and so, and hopefully it is a benign scenario, um, but I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. Um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. I think this is extremely important. Um, and, and if you think about your limbic system and your cortex, your, your limbic system is kind of your primal needs and wants, and it's, it's like where your, a lot of your emotions are coming from. And then the cortex is like the, the thinking, planning part of your brain. And I haven't met anyone who, yes, who wants to get rid of either the cortex or the limbic system. So clearly they work, work together well. Even though your cortex is, in principle, far smarter than your limbic system, uh, everybody wants to keep the limbic system and their cortex. So hopefully um, we can have a tertiary layer, which is the kind of a digital superintelligence layer. And in fact, you, you already have this layer. So it's your phone and your laptop. And the constraint is just the, how well you interface the, the, the input and output speed. Um, so the output speed is especially slow since most people are typing with thumbs these days. So you have a very slow output speed. Your input speed is much faster due to vision. But the thing that will ultimately constrain our ability to uh, be symbiotic with AI is bandwidth. Um, so in, in the limit, after, after solving a bunch of brain-related uh, diseases, there is the, the existential uh, it's mitigation of the existential threat of AI. And our, our goal is to record from and stimulate um, spikes in neurons and, and do so in a way that is uh, orders of magnitude um, more than anything that's been done to date and uh, safe and um, good enough that you can, it's, it's not like a major operation. It's, it's sort of equivalent to, to, to sort of a LASIK type of thing. So where, where you can sort of sit down, machine does this thing, and you can walk away uh, with, within a few hours. And that's it. And you don't, you're not even in a hospital. So um, the system that we were designed in version one uh, is capable of on the order of 10,000 electrodes. So each, each chip, which is four by four millimeters, is capable of, of a, a thousand um, electrodes, or has a thousand electrodes. Um, and we think doing up to 10 is feasible. So this is in contrast to um, the, the best FDA approved system, which is like a, a Parkinson's deep brain simulation a thing, which would have on the order of, of 10 electrodes. In terms of things that I think are important to, to bear in mind, this um, I think has a very good purpose, uh, which is to cure important diseases um, and ultimately to help secure humanity's uh, future as a civilization relative to AI. Um, the threads are very tiny, um, and there's a lot of them, and they're very carefully placed. 
and, and then the, the interface to the, um, to, the, to the chip is, is wireless. So you have no wires poking out of your head, very, very important. Um, so you, it, it's, it's basically Bluetooth to your phone. So we'll have to watch the App Store updates for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure we don't have a driver issue. Conceivably, there could be some kind of App Store thing in the future, um, or, or some sort of platform uh, with a, like a very rigorous, uh, you know, verification of the of the application. Yeah, um, we, but, the, but yeah, I, I mean, I think that there, this, this is certainly not meant to be like sort of a, a closed system. Ultimately, um, if we can enable others to contribute, uh, whether they're at Neuralink or not, that, that would be a good thing. So the question is, um, if, if this will not be advertising driven, which I think would be unwise, um, <laughs> then how will it be paid for, essentially? Well, um, I, I think that uh, the, the, the cost of, of these um, uh, you know, brain disease or brain injuries is, ex is extremely high to society. Um, if you have to take care of somebody or, or that they need, if they need uh, comprehensive medical care or hospice, this is actually very, very costly to society. So I think um, it, 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 the economics of, of solving for that make a ton of sense. Um, and if you enable somebody to, uh, you know, work and, and be productive, uh, you know, it, you know, contribute, contribute to the economy, I think uh, th that that will, I think that the economics of that will, will easily uh, pay for itself. Um, and and then uh, in the limit, of course, if, if you want to. Um, be symbiotic with, with AI, it'd be like, uh, I think it's safe to say you could repay the loan uh, if, <laughs> with superhuman intelligence. Um, I think it's a safe bet. So I, I think the economics of this will, will, will work out. Um, and the first order is, is really just to make sure that, that it works and works safely. Um, and, then, um, and then I think it'll really be uh, the, uh, the option of, of, of the person. Um, but but it, it, it is critical that this be sort of, as we've talked about before, like a laser-like device. If, if, if one has to be, if this has to be done by a neurosurgeon, it, is, it cannot be scaled. There just aren't enough neurosurgeons. Um, so it, it must be, um, you know, just, just as one, one wouldn't want sort of like a hand-operated uh, laser uh, for, you know, uh, an ophthalmology situation, you really want the, the, the robot doing it with precision. Um, the same thing goes for the brain interface.